Hey guys, in this video I will be attempting to visit every single op shop in the Ipswich area. And spoiler alert, as I am filming this after the fact, uh, I got them all. The only ones I didn't get to were ones that either did not actually exist, I apparently wrote a few on the list that just didn't end up existing, and there were a couple that were closed down, three of them were closed down. Unfortunate, but uh, that's just the way it is. If you do like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. I put a lot of effort into this one, so definitely uh, leave a comment if you did like it. This was the first op shop I ended up visiting in this whole trip, this Vinny's here, and I never knew it existed until I looked it up. I didn't know there were any op shops in the Springfield area, and when I saw this small DVD section I thought this might be it and that I was gonna strike out on the very first trip but I ended up finding heaps more in a area nearish to the back most were two dollars but she ended up bringing them up for only a dollar each I ended up picking up this one here Control about Ian Curtis from uh, Joy Division Seemed like an interesting film. I didn't pick that one up, I'm not a big fan of horror remakes. They're usually not as good as the originals. Had some video games too, but pretty picked through. Four dollars each is fine, but all just sports games really. Nothing overly interesting. Big Iron himself, Marty Robbins. I ended up picking that one up, it was only 50 cents. I found this guidebook for Pokemon X and Y. Interesting. I found these anime figurines. If anyone knows who these are, definitely let me know. Or maybe I should have picked them up, I don't know. I found a few things there. I shaved my beard off after this. I <laughs> got itchy. Also went to the one at Red Bank Plains, which I did know existed. I've been in this one before, it's hit or miss. Prices are pretty good on the media, only $2 each. Some of the season sets are a bit more expensive, but most of the media items, CDs and DVDs, are just $1 or $2. CDs were actually on sale for $0.50 cents each. They have a few Nintendo DS games, but as you can see, nothing to go crazy about. I found this Annie Oakley TV collection, which I thought, oh, I'll pick it up. I found some manga as well, uh, My Hero Academia. Uh, I've heard of it, don't know what it's about. But I did find a few things there. That pop vinyl figure seems pretty valuable, so thumbs up. And we'll cross the first couple of stores off of the list. This op shop in Goodna was called St. Albans. It's apparently only open like three or four hours a week. I was very lucky they were holding some kind of garage sale there. So I ended up visiting. Didn't find a whole lot of interest. A few DVDs, that Minecraft lamp. I bought a watch as well. Maybe I overpaid for the watch, but it was a nice watch. Mostly just clothes and stuff. Glad I visited it for this video, but probably won't be back. Middle of the range. This was the first place we visited on the Saturday. You can see it's really starting to pour down now. Uh, the Wounded Heroes Op Shop in Bundamba. Really good store. Do a lot of good work in the community. This Wii uh, D or PS3 DJ Hero was 30 bucks. Not a bad price. They've been remodeling the store, it looks very good now, very modern. Had some games here. PC games, $2 each, good price. 
Ended up grabbing a few of them to resell, uh, Age of Empires and, uh, the two Civilization games. Also ended up picking up one of these tapes. I look through tapes whenever I find new ones. I've sold some U2 ones before. Uh, the AHA one was the one I bought. Seems to be pretty valuable. But some, you know, well-known titles. Paula Abdu, Belinda Carlisle. Bruce Springsteen, The Mechanics. Uh, lots of DVDs. Uh, $2 for this Prometheus. A uh, four-disc set. Pretty cool. Definitely picked that up. Looks like they had the complete series of Frasier here for $2 each. I'm not in the market to watch Frasier again, but looks like they had them all. Regular show season one. I picked that up. I like to have the whole series. I don't think they released it all on DVD. They had heaps of DVDs. They also had this Imagine It premium graphics images. I guess you just go through this and click on images and look at them. This might be like an old relic from when you could send emails with graphics in them. I also had this Wii console here with Wii Fit. The only thing I saw of interest in there was a Wii Sports Resort for $100. Uh, a good deal if you just want to buy it, but not for me. We even got free bread. This store gets a thumbs up. This lifeline in Collingwood Park near my own house was uh, closed down too. Very unfortunate. I'd found quite a few items here. Seems like shopping centers are really going to be a thing of the past at some point. I love shopping centers when nothing. I visited open. this place before. It was a bit too early in the morning for them to be open. Eddie's Retro. Uh, okay place. Lots of retro stuff. Uh, p prices are what they are. Yeah, they gotta stay in too. business. I don't buy a whole lot from them because I'm a bargain hunter. Job. Plus the guy that works there has like hentai tattoos on his arms and they really creep me out. That might be like an amazing price for that. The next one here was in Bouval Fair. These lifelines in the shopping centers really usually don't have very much. And now they don't seem to have anything at all because two of them have shut down. This one and Collingwood Park. Now close. I guess it's not opening back up. Guess this oh, one gets a thumbs down just for yeah, not again. being open yeah. at all. Open what can all. you do? Cross a few off the list. We're making good progress here. 29 all up. I didn't get a whole lot of footage in this next location. It was later in the day, I was a little, uh, tired. But West Ipswich Lifeline here. I'm not sure exactly how Lifeline works. Some stores have like a retro revival section, other stores have a lot of brand new merchandise and they often don't intersect with each other. I really don't understand it. Other Lifelines seem like hole in the wall stores run by uh, just local charities. I did find a few media items. The rain was really picking up here. When it rains, it pours in Ipswich. This is the Lifeline Superstore in Yamanto. Had a public toilet though, so hey, if you're interested toilet. in that, it's there. This looked interesting. Disney game night. I've no idea what I would do with it. it seemed like a hole in the wall kind of store. It was a superstore. It was pretty big. Lots of CDs, lots of media items. Seemed to be kind of randomly priced. Most singular DVDs were $2. The box sets were individually priced. Some of them were uh, more expensive than eBay listings. I guess they just do like $2 a disc for all items. I did find a really good John Farnham Chain Reaction DVD here, which does sell for quite a bit of money. But at the same time, I also 
found the original Star Wars trilogy with the bonus discs, but they were scratched up and they were taped up too, which was interesting. Usually they tape up items because they check them themselves, but I can't imagine they would have put these out if they knew they were this as scratched up as they were. I ended up putting them back. Lots to look through though. Big store, big old warehouse, lots of interesting stuff. I ended up putting back those uh, Star Wars DVDs. Picked up two items, thumbs in the middle. This Vinny's in West Ipswich, I usually have pretty decent luck at. Didn't get a whole lot of footage in there. It's a pretty decent sized store. I was surprised to see VHS tapes priced individually. I don't know if anyone's gonna buy those. I did find this one here, Necrotronic, and I also found Dogma on DVD, which will be to resell. Other than that, no video games. Uh, CDs were more expensive than DVDs, which was interesting. There's the copy of Dogma there. Bit of magic there. Next up is the uh, Salvos in West Ipswich. Another family store. I don't know the difference between Salvos and Salvation Army family stores. I have no idea what the difference is. This one was giving away free bread too. There was a guy looking through the DVDs so I had to do some covert filming. Not the best work. I had a few video games, some PC games as well. They're only a dollar each but I just don't need Wii Fit. Decent selection of media, two big shelves. Some VHS too which was interesting. And some more there, CDs as well. This store had a downstairs section, and the upstairs section was all clothing. It had a top, middle, and a bottom. Good to see them making the use of all of their space. Heaps of books, heaps of classical music, all sorts of things down here. Electrical items. That koala book was free. More op shops should do free stuff. Like free bread, free books. This salvo's in Yamanto, it was bucketing down at this point. It's absolutely drenching rain. Good weather for Ipswich. I like when it rains. This was the store I went in just after finding those Star Wars DVDs and putting them back. And interestingly enough, this store had one of them, but it was only a single disc release. So I guess it wouldn't have the originals on it. Kind of interesting. This is also the first store where I found some anime stuff. Definitely interesting, just in with the kids DVDs, I guess you have to look everywhere. Three bucks for Love Hina specials? I remember watching this one way back in the day. Got a guy moving in with a bunch of chicks. I remember liking it when I was younger, teenager. I showed this shirt to my wife, I thought she'd find it really funny. Look, it says, eat local. I don't think she was hu it's as humoured as I was on the matter. <laughs> That's for a kid. It's for a baby. You know, a baby. This is a big store. A big Lots store. of clothes. I was really thinking of picking up this green screen backdrop. I should have picked it up, it was only $5, but... What would I do with it? 
I understand green screens are actually a lot more difficult to set up than you think. It's not just like uh, point and shoot. You got to get all the lighting and everything correct. Otherwise, it looks it looks horrible. How much do they want for this Wii Fit board? Six bucks. Wow, good price. This was a hamburger maker. I guess he put mincemeat inside and just squash it down to the size of hamburgers. I also saw these hockey sticks. Really cool for like street hockey. I used to play that all the time as kids. Just out on the road, move move over when a car comes. Ooh, a stick mixer. I ended up grabbing this stick mixer. I've been looking for one for a while. Yeah, even though it's pouring down rain, that salvo store, fantastic. Big thumbs up. You hold this and point it at me. I'm running out of hands. I just give a thumbs up. That's all I needed. The RSPCA in Brassel. This is a store we visited when it first opened and have not been back to since. Just because Beagle's it's a little hand. bit further away from all of the west of the VIP switch. We live on the far east side and Brassel is pretty far north, just before the river. Big store, lots to look at, heaps and heaps of clothes. Found a few DVDs, ended up putting a few back too. Thought that was a cute shirt. Had more DVDs and CDs around the side. There's my beautiful wife. It was more of the DVDs, some of the Blu-rays. Two dollars each is a good price. That's about what I like to pay for DVDs. I like to get them cheaper, but two dollars is still a good price. I ended up finding some obscure horror ones, which you might see in the video. I was recommending that to my wife. Great movie. Never heard of that one. I saw this cow jumping over the moon and I was really enamored yeah, by the moon's the face. It looks very creepy. This may be um, this one here. Yep. And this is some covert footage I got. This was right at the counter. But they had all of the video games at the counter. They were five dollars each except for Super Mario Brothers Wii which was thirty. I ended up leaving that behind. Yeah. Just don't need it for that price. Yeah, Fallout. I ended up just grabbing Fallout the collection for five dollars. Good price on the rest, but I'm just not in the market for them. Red Cross Op Shop here, outside of the city centre, but still considered Ipswich Central. There's not a whole lot of these Red Cross Op Shops around, which is a shame because Red Cross do some amazing work. They really helped out uh, my family during the 2011 uh, flooding disaster in Brisbane. Good selection of DVDs, $2 each, or well, $3 each, wow, that's kind of pricey. Uh, $3, I really only buy something that I'm really heavily looking for. I usually only like to pay $1 or $2. I did end up finding a T-Rex DVD, T-Rex the singer who sings 20th Century Boy. Seems to be worth a little bit of money, so I ended up picking it up. Maybe you'll see it in the video, maybe not. There we go. Thumbs in the middle. Coming up to another oh, inner city op shop, games. this is probably the most time I've ever spent in Ipswich's city central. I don't make it a habit to come here, there are very sketchy people around. Uh, this looked interesting, Dark Magician games, Rare Dolls, but it was closed down. Everything in Ipswich Central is closed down. Not sure how this place makes money. DVDs were 50 cents each, I asked 
unfortunately, unfortunately, I had to leave some things behind here because I only accepted cash and I only had my card. It's a shame, I found a copy back there of Pirates of Penzance, the 1983 version. They did have some good movies, but unfortunately, I did not have cash on me. Cool store though, lots of stuff, pretty small. The final inner city op shop for Ipswich here was the New Life op shop. I'm sure this is church affiliated, but I did not know which one. Hey, are we fit? Hey, are we fit? Jason Graves found heaps of these in his Goodwill video. Twenty dollars? Oh, that's in the box. That's not bad. Decent selection of DVDs. They had some Blu-rays on another shelf. I uh, ended up picking up planes, trains, and automobiles. Two dollars, good price. Most of these inner city op shops are just converted from old buildings, so there's a lot of like rooms to go into and stuff to look at. I'm a big fan of op shops that are just in old buildings, especially heritage listed ones. There's my gorgeous wife. Kids stuff. Lots of kids stuff. Toys and whatnot. I found this oil filter. It was not compatible with my car, otherwise I probably would have bought it. But you'd need to be really careful buying an oil filter from an op shop. It also had underwear, which I assumed was used. Pretty gross. Everyone gets a thumbs in the middle. Welfare League in Ipswich City Centre. Kind of an annoying store to access, as are all of these inner city stores because you can't park right next to them. You need to either pay for parking or find a free parking area, which aren't always available and are often very full. I probably wouldn't visit most of these op shops again. They had okay stuff, good prices, but nothing to waste an hour of my day out of. This op shop was not open when I went there on the Saturday, it had just closed. I hope this one is still open. I ended up having to go back on Thursday when it was open. Then. So the inside footage you're seeing is on Thursday. They had some decent movies, quite a lot to look through. Two dollars each is a good price. No differential between you know, Blu-rays and DVDs. That one looked like it had some resale value, so I picked it up. There's a lot of stuff in the store. Interesting to look at. I also ended up grabbing this uh, Dilbert book. I think the guy that made these ended up going nuts. And I picked up this uh, Century Top. Next up, one of my favorite stores in the Ipswich area. Love the design and the layout. Lifeline Jacaranda Street, situated in the heart of Bouval. Kind of a random store. It's surrounded by nothing but houses. There's no other shops around here. But this is one of the best stores in Ipswich. Massive, oh thank god, a toilet. Hey, it's dark in here. Massive shop. Huge selection of DVDs, media, clothes, just everything. Lots of CDs. I almost always walk out with stuff here. Even my wife bought something. Anyone remember when Gone with the Wind was like a hundred dollars? That was a good couple of months. A lot of box sets, 
Some of them a little bit pricey. I think the season sets were five to ten dollars each, but if you are looking for them, it's not a bad price. Most singular DVDs were two dollars each. In that shopping trolley there was heaps of anime, and I picked up an absolute heap of them. My wife was pointing out this carrier, but I was on cloud nine, and so I was just nodding my head and agreeing with whatever she said. You're gonna see some good stuff in the pickups. What is that? that Snapdragons? Snapdragon. I thought this was really cool. Some kind of cask to store wine? Made from an old barrel? There's something really neat. If I had infinite space, I'd love to collect. Odd handmade furniture like, like this. Bottles in there, Catherine. I just think it's really interesting. It's a keg trolley. This store is full of interesting stuff. This stuff was all pre owned uh, furniture. Some real gems in there. Like those bright red, uh. Look, it's those bright red seats, recliner chairs. They're a good looking couple, eh? Especially you. Doing Very happy with this stuff. Definitely my favourite stop of the trip so far. Oh shit, the sun even came out. Check it out. The Salvers in Bundamba is an interesting store. I often walk out of here empty handed, although I do think they do get new stuff in quite often. Many times I go inside and find new stuff on the shelves, but it's often picked through unfortunately. These are some nice bikes. $50 each is a good price for good bikes. Tires were pumped up and everything. These were ready to ride. I've been wanting to get a new bike for quite a while. This store has a good layout. Nice and spacious. Lots of stock. They got some interesting things in here too. They had an electric wheelchair at the front which I had to... My wife talked me out of getting on it and trying it out. Had some video games, but as you can see, pretty picked through. Two dollars is a good price, even if it is filler. That one was only one dollar. I contemplated getting this Energy Air Force, but I did not end up getting it. I left it behind. Some decent stuff there. This was interesting, like a Texas jigsaw puzzle? Not my kind of thing. I found a Tetris board game once, I think it was called Tetris Lynx. In a sale of the century. Yeah, nice big media section there. That guy was grabbing stuff too, he seemed to grab quite a lot. The Lifeline store in Ipswich Central, more specifically the River Links Shopping Centre, is very hit or miss. I've found good stuff here before, but also walked out of here empty handed a lot. Lots of media arranged by alphabetical order, which is interesting. Don't see that a whole lot in op shops. You saw that flower stand there. Lifeline sells a lot of, like, brand new items. I'm not sure how much of it sells. Uh, I really don't know. They they seem like an IKEA-esque type store in some areas, and then they also sell some used items. I'll spoil the footage here. I do not find anything at this store. Cool wrestling DVD. These shopping center stores just get picked through too much. Uh, Voltron on DVD, if this was a complete set I would have bought it, but it seemed to just be one volume of a bigger collection. Here's some of that brand new stuff. The prices seem pretty high to me, but I don't really look at furniture. I don't know if these are prices are good or not. It just seems very expensive for an op shop. 
Goodness Street Life is one that has recently opened after closing down somewhere else. They had quite a lot of media. You can kind of see in the background they had a food bank as well. I ended up getting some uh, almonds from there which were really nice. They had like honey and sugar coated on them. Really good. Hey, it's me! I also bought pasta sauce. I didn't know how much movies were here, but they turned out to be 50 cents each. If I had known before looking through them, I'd have bought more. I definitely would have bought the uh, Toy Story ones. Other than that, the place gave away free bread, free veggies. I didn't take them up on that, I paid for everything I got from here. But they seem to do quite a lot of good for the local community, so definitely a good one to support. Thumbs up. Next up, you see my Corolla, Ipswich Community Care F Fund? Here we go, I've been in this one a couple times before, found some good stuff. Don't visit it a whole lot. The complex it's in has a lot of really cool uh, takeaway stores. A place that sells a lot of nice Samoan food. The footage I got wasn't the best, but I tried. I tried. If you wanted books, this place had it. This place had like a library. Books probably took up half of the inventory of this place. They even had a little video game section. They wanted five dollars each, but when I took this one up to the counter, man, new Super Mario Brothers? Uh, they only wanted fifty cents for each item I bought. The disc was in good condition. Great price. Thumbs up. If you've ever bought something off of my eBay store, chances are you've had your item dropped into this exact post box here. Conveniently located on my drive home from work. Lifeline shop there. And the salvos across the street. Oh yeah. I've probably been to this store a hundred or two hundred times since moving to this area. They used to be across the road, but Seems like all the op shops in Goodna move around every few years. Hopefully now they've settled into a normalcy. 50% off DVDs? We might have to stock up here. What's this? Frisky Dingo? Alright. Never heard of that. Invaders from space? Red Cliff? I've sold that Red Cliff before on Blu-ray. This Invaders from Space is really cool. One dollar for a bunch of old B-movies. Check this out, the orange box for two dollars fifty. Five dollars minus half off. Disc and manual. One thing I really like about the Lifeline shops is they just sell anything. Some stores don't sell bric-a-brac, some stores don't sell media or electrical. Lifeline just sells everything. I picked up a heap of stuff from this store. Big thumbs up. Now we'll cross off heaps of stuff. We're making really good progress here. Unfortunately, some of these stores weren't open anymore. One man's junk closed down two months before I started making this video, which is unfortunate. Uh, this Salvo's op shop is attached to some kind of uh, youth and community centre. I've never gone into that part, only the family store. I found some really good stuff here in the past, but it is very hit or miss. They don't seem to put out new stuff very often. The 
you can see there are a lot of shelf space on the uh, media aisles. They have two sections for DVDs, both pretty picked over. About a month ago I did find a PlayStation 1 game here though, which is one of the only video games I've found in this location in a long time. Before then, earlier in the year I found a copy of uh, Zone of the Enders Second Runner on PS2. But just singular ones, you don't find big stacks of games, just one here or there. I thought this was interesting, someone framed a snake skin. There's lots of snakes out there, but maybe that one was special. They also have an electronics section, which I've found stuff there before, but there was a bike blocking it so I couldn't look through it really. It looks pretty barren as you can see, there's just not a lot to find in that store. The very last location here is the Unordinary Canary Foundation Op Shop. I don't know what this was supporting, but it's definitely charity affiliated. They had heaps of movies. I thought this was going to be all like a used clothing store, but no, it had regular thrift stuff as well. It had a bit of everything. Behind those tubs, they were still bringing stuff out. It was early in the day, they had uh, cords and stuff. Hoping to find a laptop cord, but I did not find one. But I did find two great horror movies. I know they throw just anything on clothing now, but I, I don't know if I'd ever consider. I'm not a woman, but who would wear a Sailor Moon dress, like? I don't know, it just seems gaudy and bad looking. But that is crossing off every item on the list. There we go, I'm glad I did this, I'm glad it's over too. Done and dusted. So I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to film this for the pickups and the audio. I know I wanted to keep them separate to that's been the theme of this whole video, I've been trying something different to kind of modernize my game hunting videos to make them a bit slicker, a bit easier to watch, kind of uh, a better flow, ebb and flow, a better pace. I hope it's worked, I won't know with the finished product, but I'm really just trying something different. It's a lot of effort, it's a lot more effort than the usual ones, so I'm hoping it comes out pretty nicely. But we'll start going through the pickups here. We're starting with the Lifeline and Goodna. I found quite a bit of stuff here, we have this Sons of Anarchy thing. Most items are to sell, I'll mention if anything I'm keeping. Orange Box was a cool find, all of this stuff was... All the media was half price, these books are to sell. I might read them too, I like books. Even kids ones. Red Cliff, uh, this was brand new sealed for 50 cents. Uh, one of those Adult Swim series, I uh, never got into any of them. The Driver, really cool movie from the 70s I believe. Bill and Ted Face the Music, and these were really cool. I used to have heaps of these collections. They're all up on YouTube now, but it's nice to have them as physical media. This was from the RSPCA in Brassel. I bought quite a bit there actually. I bought this uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. I usually grab any CDs I find that are brand new sealed. Brand new sealed CDs sell really well. The only game I picked up there was the Fallout Collection. I'm not sure if it needs a manual to work, I'm really not sure. Uh, the Boost, I was hoping this would be worth a little bit more. I didn't look it up. It's only worth around 9 or $10 maybe. I've sold this before, $15 should be pretty easy to get, I paid $4 very happily. I like to support the RSPCA, they do a lot of good work with animals. That's where I got my uh, uh, Cleo, our cat for the last uh, 15 years. She passed away just last year, rest in peace. 
So I always like to support that op shop, because they help out the animals. Uh, Blood Creek looked interesting. I'm always on the lookout for, you know, horror movies that I've never seen or heard of. Looked interesting. Uh, Paper Tigers. This must be by the same people who are making the new Assassin's Creed about... I'm not sure, maybe like a Kung Fu martial arts movie? Looked interesting, I'll give it a watch. I don't understand all the controversy of that stuff. Uh, Silent Running. Uh, this is a cool movie, worth a bit now. It never used to be, but I guess it went up in price. Uh, Dogma from Vinny's. These were a dollar each, these were the, this was the Vinnies in West Ipswich. Uh, these were just to sell from the Lifeline in West Ipswich. Never heard of this one, Captain Ron. I like uh, Kurt Russell, I might check this out before I go to sell it. And the classic Judge Dredd with Sylvester Stallone, still a good one to sell. And another copy of Dogma, I wish these were still worth a lot of money, but the. Only worth around nine, ten dollars now. Still worth picking up for a dollar or two. Uh, we're caring for that cat at the moment for an elderly lady. Uh, that cat's name is Pippin, but she's not here to stay. I'm not sure why I grabbed that one. Retreat. But whatever. These are from the Salvos in Bundamba. That was from the Salvos in West Ipswich. But I've mixed it in there. Uh, great old movie, Sons and Lovers, D.H. Lawrence, excellent author. Really captures the old spirit of Australia. This was interesting from the lifeline in Yamanto. Never seen a PC game made by Phoenix. And this John Farnham chain reaction is worth about $30 to $40. I've sold it before, second time finding it out in the wild. Excellent find. These were cool finds. I love watching these, like, just like aerial footage, drone footage. For some reason, it really speaks to me, and they play nice music over them. This one seems to be somewhat valuable. And Love Hina Specials. I believe this is, like, the way you see the end of the series, because the 26-episode series doesn't cover the whole story. Uh, we've got Maze Runner here, the trilogy... This was from the Ipswich Community Care Fund op shop. Super Mario Brothers Wii, really cool find. These were just 50 cents each. I bought a CD from there as well because it was in a PS1 case and I swapped it out with one of my PS1 games. Disc is in pretty good condition. Looks like they wrote it on the back of another game manual. Interesting. And this was a great find. I needed a case for my 3DS, and this one isn't in the best shape, but for 50 cents the price was right. I try to have all of my handhelds in some sort of a case so that if they ever need to be transported, they're not left out in the open. This was from the uh, New Hope Op Shop in the Ipswich City. Planes, trains, and automobiles, an absolute classic. On the Blu-ray, it's worth about 10 bucks, so for $2, not bad. The tape was a dollar. Found this Dilbert book at the St. Paul's Anglican Church. I like Dilbert. I'll always remember Stone Cold Steve Austin in the Dilbert cartoon show. No Country for Old Men, excellent movie. Upgrading my DVD with that one, and Dr. Knock, which is some kind of a comedy. I'll check it out. They don't make a lot of comedies anymore. And a Century Toad for 20 cents. I thought it was an interesting thing. Brand New Sealed, Willy Nilly, The Twelfth Man's Biggest Hits. Cool find, Brand New Sealed. This was in the Animal Welfare League, these finds here. Alice in Wonderland, I've sold this for $15 in the past. Never sat down to watch it. I'm not sure if it's a good version of the movie, but it does sell. And a Babe double pack. Babe and Babe Pig in the City. DVD doubles. Really cool. Only one dollar for those. It really is a golden time to be buying media, whether you're keeping it for yourself or reselling. I know the economy's not doing great, but 
people love their media. Harvey Birdman. I was going to watch that later, so I put it to the side. The Boy in the Plastic Bubble with John Travolta. Really cool find. I think that's the first time I've ever found that movie. And some horror movies here. Ed Jean. These were from The Unordinary Canary. These were just $1 each. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Uncut 25th Anniversary. Now for the first time ever in widescreen. That was a cool find. I'm probably going to keep this one for myself because I do like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Great movie. These are from this, uh, that one Anglican op shop that was holding a garage sale. This is what I found there. I figured I'd pick up these DVD sets. I wasn't finding anything else, but I didn't want to leave empty-handed. Maybe I can do well on them. Maybe not. I don't know. They were two dollars each. Uh, from the goodness Street Life. These are all fifty cents each, so not fifty cents per disc. Fifty cents per pack. I was really surprised. I would have bought way more if I knew there were only fifty cents. I'm definitely gonna go back and. Stuck up on some great films. I don't know if those are great films. <laughs> but I also found the Star Wars trilogy there, the originals. I'm looking for a set with the original uh, cinema releases, theatrical releases for my own collection, but they're hard to find in good condition, it seems. Uh, this was brand new sealed Kinky Boots. These are all from the... Uh, St. Vincent de Paul's in either Red Bank Plains or Springfield. Good stores. I found a lot of stuff in them. <laughs> Marty Robbins, Gunfield Ballads. Uh, I'll always remember playing Fallout. Uh, I think it was Fallout New Vegas. And the song comes on. The Big Iron. Uh, Control. This is the one about uh, Joy Division. Lano and Woodley, old Aussie show. I never checked this out. Maybe it's funny. I'm really not sure. A uh, Reign of the Children. I'm always looking for documentaries about interesting subjects, about people from like foreign lands, and these ones were definitely interesting. About the uh, native Kiwi people made in the 80s. Uh, Raw, the documentary. This is the documentary about the woman who ate vegetables to cure cancer. I'm not sure about the legitimacy of that claim, but it does have some value, so I'll watch it, then I'll sell it. Lone Wolf McRaid, a classic Chuck Norris film. Still sells for, you know, a little bit, you know, about the $10 range. And this one was brand new sealed, I didn't look it up. Uh, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. And it's not the Don't Be Afraid of the Dark that you might be thinking of. It seems to be a different movie than the book series. This is one creepy ass frightmare. They really printed that on the back, wow. This stuff here was also from one of those two stores. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Great old PC game. I'm actually gonna put that in and see if I can get it working. Uh, Annie Oakley TV collection. This is a region all, so I'm going to try and sell it. Sometimes these old westerns do well. Uh, they had some pop vinyl figures. This is the only one that I saw had a bit of value. Betty Boop and Pudgy. It's only $6. Seems to go for more. And, uh, another brand new sealed CD. James Blunt, uh, Once Upon... I like a bit of James Blunt. He seemed to like vanish off the face of the earth, but he's a good singer. These were from the uh, uh, Wounded Heroes Op Shop in Bundamba. Excellent op shop. They do absolutely fantastic things for the community, helping our, you know, veterans of war. I always try to support them where I can, buy stuff from their op shops. They have a cafe attached to. My wife always gets a hot drink while we're there. These were $2 each. Their media items are all $2 each. I bought most of these to sell myself. Regular show. I wish I could find like a full series set of this, but it seems pretty hard to find nowadays. This is cool to find. Brand new sealed Prometheus. 
four disc collector's edition. I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, so I'll probably just try to sell this. This was also from the Salvos in West Ipswich. 20 years of Kevin Bloody Wilson. I had a friend in high school who was really into Kevin Wilson. I guess maybe he'd never heard swear words before. Uh, nice dreams, Cheech and Chong. Oh, what a classic, man. Back when a bit of drug use was all it took to get you an R18 rating, but honestly the movies are like really tame nowadays. <clears throat> But obviously great old comedies. This was from the uh, Red Cross in Ipswich. Best of Mark uh, Bolin and T-Rex. Now the only song I know on here is 20th Century Boy, but yeah, that's a great old song. This is worth about 25 bucks, so for $3 I thought I'd pick it up. And now we have this. From the Lifeline in Jacaranda Street, I was having a lot of difficulty finding anything in Lifelines, and maybe it's because it all gets sent to Jacaranda Street. This one was $6 here, I bought it for the Buddy Holly story, that one sells for about $15 by itself, so in a triple pack, I'm sure it'll do very well. Uh, this is for myself, The Road. Upgrade from my DVD copy, excellent film. Excellent book too. It's... The book and the film are basically the same, the book only goes into detail a little bit more about like his story with his wife. Uh, Chernobyl, the miniseries. I wanted to watch this when it came out, but I don't have any streaming services. You guys know me, I'm old school. I like to find it on the physical media, and I like it to be cheap. Five bucks? Hell yeah. Uh, I didn't know anything about this one, but I thought I'd pick it up. Garm Wars, The Last Druid. I actually found a DVD if, of this in the next store I went in, but I guess it's better to have it on Blu-ray. Uh, these are both to sell. I have these in my collection already. Toy Story 3. Good game. It's not exactly what you would think it would be. It's more like, like a world-building game. More than just like a 3D platformer. I was kind of hoping it would be a bit more linear. And Lego Lord of the Rings. I like playing the Lego games. They're nice and simple. It's... It's good to play something that challenges you and you know, makes you feel like an accomplished gamer. But it's also nice to play something that's kind of simple, kind of like stress relieving. Uh, Iria, the complete series, I found heaps of anime there. Between two and ten dollars, most of them were two dollars. Voices of a Distant Star. I've not heard of most of these, but I was actually really surprised to find a few that not only I had heard of, but I'd actually been looking for. Like this one here was $10 and I was happy to pay it. Gazaraki, the complete series. I've been looking for this for the longest time. I used to get a little bit of anime from like places like CEX when I had the credit, but since they stopped stocking DVDs, anime has like really dried up. You know, unless you're buying them online and you're paying, you know, the premium. Uh, Brave Story, never heard of it. But all of this stuff, I'll sit down and give it a watch before I sell it on. Oh, uh, Rod the TV? I have no idea. Five dollars for a complete series, I, I was not leaving it behind. The only stuff I did leave behind was, uh, it had a bunch of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z ones, and I'm not really into Dragon Ball Z. I do like it, but it's such a long series that I could never sit down to watch it in its entirety again. Um, Mezzo. Complete collection, never heard of it. Some of this stuff looked a bit pervy, so I don't know how much of it I'll watch, but... Danger has never looked so good. I'm usually not into the pervy ones, but if it has a good story. I've been looking for this one for years. Ever since I saw this on Netflix, only yesterday, we cancelled our Netflix subscription. It got too expensive for us. And so, I've been looking for a DVD forever, but it seems to go for $25, $30. So I was very, very happy to find this one. 
There's a double disc release that goes for a lot of money, but that was just a single disc, but I am not complaining. Excellent find. This one too, Porco Rosso, two of the harder to find Ghibli movies. You don't see anime all the time, but uh, you definitely don't see Only Yesterday and Porco Rosso that often. I think Porco Rosso is one that's a bit more well known. I, I actually did have a copy of this, but it was too scratched, so I had to give it away. Excellent movies though. Uh, never heard of this one, El Hazard, The Magnificent World. I thought this might have been a bootleg, but it has a M15 plus rating on the back, so I guess it is real. It's just not labelled very well. Uh, Gunslinger Girl? I don't know how much of this one I'll watch, but $4 for the complete collection. Seems to be about little girls who, like, shoot people. Uh, I know there's like a there's some weird stuff about little kids in Japan, like, stuff that I am not comfortable with looking at. Uh, the Skycrawlers is an excellent movie, I've seen this before. One of the first ones I saw when I was getting into anime. Really well done, stylized. Yeah, some really great dogfighting scenes. Really good to watch. Uh, Escaflown? The movie? Never heard of it. Two bucks, I figured I'll pick it up. Give it a watch, give it a try. That's what I like about a movie, you know, if it's not for you, you watch it, you get halfway through or whatever, you just take it out. The Place Promised in Our Early Days, that's a long name. No idea what that's about, but we'll see. No idea. Seems to have a lot of, um accolades to it, so maybe it's good. Alright, and finally here I actually had some garage sale finds that I never got footage for. We have Wreck-It Ralph on Blu-ray. These are a dollar each. 3D Blu-ray, brand new sealed. A triple pack of Steve Martin. Seems to go for about ten dollars. I'm not really into Steve Martin comedies. I just don't think he's very funny. But that's a good one to sell. And uh, Suicide Squad, in a digibook, it comes with, I was pretty humoured by this, it comes with like a art book. Very strange what they try to use to sell media to people. I don't know if many people bought that, but I've got it. It, it sold it to me. And I actually went to a garage sale that was advertising a lot of anime and video games. And the guy knew what he had, mostly, but I grabbed this one here, Psycho Diver. Most of the series sets were $30, so I only ended up picking up one that I was really interested in re-watching. Uh, Ichi the Killer, I'd love to find the live-action version of this, I've been wanting to re-watch it for a long time, it's a very strange film. Uh, very different, very foreign. You know, some of the stuff they put in, like, Japanese films is, like, really shocking. And welcome to the NHK. This was $30, but I felt it was a good price. He ended up doing $35 for the three of them, which I thought was fair. A uh, really cool series about a shut-in and a uh, Hikikomori, a guy who never leaves his house. And like kind of the world around him and how he's kind of losing his mind from not getting enough exposure from outside elements. Alright, and that is it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I put a lot more effort into this one than I have in any video in a very long time. You guys know me, I'm, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to video making these days. I've, I've wanted to keep making videos forever, but you know, sometimes when you put a lot of effort into a video and it gets like 80 views, it's like you really wonder why you're bothering. And uh, I find uh, I find it's a marathon, not a sprint. There was a time when I was doing them at least once a week and I was getting good views and I was building up a viewership and people were liking them and commenting and the analytics were all good. And, you know, once I stopped and started doing it stop and start, it's been really difficult to try and get back into it fully. I've 
I've never stopped hunting. I'm always looking for stuff. I'm always buying and selling. But the notion of sitting down and like recording my finds has really been something that just hasn't interested me in a while. And like I'm seeing in the analytics when I do record stuff that you know, there's, there's just no audience for it anymore. But that's enough of a gripe about that. If I ever want to make a video about that, I will. And uh, I don't think YouTube is a, is a good platform for people doing this kind of content. But hopefully we try something different and it works out. I'd love for this to get at least, like, I don't know, 200 views and 10 comments from 10 different people, like... And that's the thing, you know, like, when you get 80 or 100 views on something, you look at the analytics and you see, like, oh, yeah, 90% of people are tuning out within the first minute. So it's like, in reality, you're getting 80 to 100 views and maybe 10 people are watching the video in full. And and that's really frustrating to me to think that there's just no appetite for it.